wonder. Let's see what you picked up that I didn't. Let's see what I missed. I know you got some details here I'm going to want to know. So let's get it and make sure you subscribe to the Cosmic Wonder. All right, Spider-Man No Way Home spoiler review. I am going to be talking about spoilers in this video. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this, so if you have not seen Spider-Man No Way Home and you don't want to know anything about it, I'll give you a few seconds to leave until we really get into it. <laughs> they did it! <laughs> they did it! They made a Spider-Verse film with the three Spider-Mans. It's did. insane. I cannot believe that they actually did this. Yes, we've been talking about it for a while. Yes, I was talking about the three Spider-Man showing up for over a year now, but to see it on film was spectacular. And it's not just the fact <laughs> that we saw it on film that makes me love it so much. It's not just the fact that we saw them there. It's how they did it. Mm -hmm. They actually executed this, in my opinion, perfectly. I think they did it exactly the way they needed to do it. Yes, there was some fan service in there, but I think they did it incredibly well. And I think everything else that came along with the movie was just spectacular. And I'm going to talk about why I think this is the greatest superhero movie of all time. Now, right off the bat, I acknowledge that not what? everybody is going to think that. I personally am a little bit biased towards Spider-Man. If you haven't been able to tell in the past uh, year or so, <laughs> I love Spider-Man. He's fantastic, but this story in particular really took it over the top for me. And this is the Spider-Man end game. That's what they've been calling it. And that's yeah. what we kind of knew. It's a Spider-Man flashpoint, Spider too. Coming together. But it's not just the Spider-Man coming together that makes this movie truly awesome. This is actually a Peter Parker story. And Tom yeah. Holland yeah. Yeah. gets his Peter Parker story. I mean, you know, Toby and Andrew are only in, what, the last 45 minutes, 30 minutes um, and I'm glad they did it that way. And I'm glad they came in the way they came in. I'm glad they just didn't start swinging in and fighting. I actually preferred the science bros parts, which yeah. I'm, I'm going to say. That would have been cool if out of nowhere he needed I, I help and they swung in. Well, let's start off <laughs> with just Tom. I would have took that too. this is his movie, right? Yes, it's this huge in-game movie, but this is his movie. And his uh, acting, really. Tom, exactly. Wow. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure I've seen this from him before. I definitely haven't seen it from him with his past Spider-Man movie. Uh, I like Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire's always been my favorite, but Tom Holland, I think, stepped it up in this one. I, I really do. The story was really good. The emotion that came with it, wow, what a roller coaster of emotion. You know, I'm going to talk about that in detail, but Tom, I feel like this was his time to shine, and he, he performed. He shined. He mm -hmm. really did. I think he gave it his all, and it, it comes through on the screen. Tom, mm -hmm. if you happen to stumble upon this video, thank you for this. That's, that picture is when he's mad. You truly <laughs> put your all into it. I, you made me cry. You made me laugh. Um, it, Tom was phenomenal. Tom was phenomenal. And speaking of acting, the villains, oh my gosh. I didn't think Willem Dafoe could do better than he did as the Green Goblin in the first Spider-Man film. And he film. did. But what? Yeah, he did as good or better. Terrifying yeah. in this movie. <laughs> terrifying in this movie. Menacing. I mean, it was just, it was it was perfect. I, I, didn't, think it could, I didn't think it could get better, and it did. Willem Dafoe just came back after like 20 years and was like, let me show you how it's done. <laughs> it's almost like he was thinking about this role for the past 20 years and was like, well, I could do it like this. And then he finally gets his chance. He's like, watch me do it perfectly. And he did it perfectly. Now, the other villains, of course, they showed up as well because you have actors like Alfred Molina and, and Jamie Foxx, and they're just fantastic as well. And everything that involved them was executed perfectly. Again, I loved Jamie Foxx's character. I loved how confident he was. I loved kind of the new new, as he calls it. That was pretty great. The only thing about some of the other villains right, is man. like Sandman and the Lizard. They were Sandman just kind of there. Yeah, they were. Right? Yeah. Yeah, they they were. Kind of there in the background, but they did have their moments, right? Yeah. Sandman pops up and he, and he helps Peter. He's like, Peter, it's me, yeah. Flint. Right? And he, and he tries to save him, and he gets confused because Peter's like, I, I'm Peter, but not here. Peter's like, what? And so he helps him, and then he kind of turns because he doesn't trust him. Right? He had his yeah. time to shine as well, I think. And then, of course, you have the lizard who basically I just think all of the villains in this movie and basically all the returning characters did a phenomenal job. I think we actually saw the villains in a better light than we've ever seen them, though. I think they did. I think they all did better. Goblin and Doc Ock shine the so, most, though. Which is hard to say. It's hard to say because Alfred Molina did fantastic 
Willem Dafoe, they all did fantastic in the movies that they originally came out on, but this was just, this I feel like was on a whole nother level. But let's talk about how they brought the Spider-Mans in, because that, to me, was the best part. Now, Ned finds out that he's magic and can open a portal, which is kind of a qualm I have, because it seems like he did it just a little bit too easy, but it's not a movie about Ned, so I don't really care that much, right? Um, I think the way they did everything else completely just trumps the little tiny things that maybe you could have changed. So Ned's I don't really need that right powers. now. But Ned opens up. Ned's got right? magical neck. He nap. says, I just want to see Peter. And then we see the Ned's other Spider-Man. It's a silhouette of Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man in the background. And they're like, come, come, come. And he comes in. And we you can tell by the suit. The fans <laughs> already knew by the suit. And then he takes the mask off. And there's the werewolf right in your face. <laughs> and the banter is funny. Right, he's like, prove that you're Spider-Man. Do you have the spider tingle? I do, but not for bread being thrown at me. And then we have Ned's mom asking him to clean the spider webs, and then Toby shows up. He tries to do it again. Toby shows up, and it's just perfect. And the two of them play for like two seconds. I was like, like I kind of wanted something like a little bit more than that, but I didn't really want him to fight. But once I saw, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're about to fight. This is actually going to be crazy cool. And they did for like two seconds, and I actually thoroughly enjoyed that. But it was perfect. Because then they stepped in as Uncle Ben. Because that's what we wanted, right? Because for Tom, for Tom Spider-Man, in this movie we had like a reverse Uncle Ben. Right? Aunt May became Uncle Ben. Mm -hmm. Because normally it's Uncle Ben that dies, right? right? It says with great power comes great responsibility. And right. then when he dies, Peter Parker is left with Aunt May. However, this is kind of the opposite. Now, we don't really know what happened to Uncle Ben. We could probably assume that Tom Holland's Uncle Ben died. But yeah. Aunt May took that role in this movie. Right. She gave him that line, with great power comes great responsibility, and then she dies. But now Peter has nobody. I wonder why he That's doesn't have Uncle Ben. That's when Toby and Andrew show up, and they kind of take that role of Uncle Ben. They kind of are there to console him, and they hug him. And it's like the dynamic between the three of them is simply... Or why is Uncle Ben's dead, so they come right? in, or not and there. And they all just connect perfectly. And I'm going to talk about my favorite part of the movie right now, because it starts right in this scene where they start talking to Peter. Andrew Garfield. No, really, like, Andrew Garfield, I think, brought so much to this movie, and his character made me cry. His character made me cry. For those people who wanted redemption for Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, that part I made me like cry too, man. They really got it. I, was I feel like going Andrew with it. himself got whatever he was looking for from this movie, because obviously it was really, really hard for him, right? Not a lot of people liked his movies. That's not really on him. I think he was a really good yeah, Spider-Man. I thought he was great. The movies weren't cut out to be I liked both movies. what they were supposed to be, right? That's not on him. I like both movies. But this movie, stuff. oh my gosh, whenever he would talk about Gwen, and when he saved MJ, and he landed, and he was yep. crying, I cried. Like, I, I did too. Cried, and I, I just was saw fucked him last up. night, I still cried. I was like, oh, shit! Talking <laughs> about Gwen, I, I, it was really, really emotional really emotional mm -hmm. and then we had the part where he's talking to toby and he's like i suck and toby's like wait a second you're amazing now this part <laughs> i love because it's like meta right it's yeah. obviously like oh he's the amazing spider-man right. right that's really clever but i feel like this is also like a conversation that he's had maybe with toby but definitely had like on his own like well, wow, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is loved. Tom right. Holland's Spider-Man is loved, but I'm kind of not, right? People don't really like my movies. Yeah. And this is where, you know, they're kind of saying, like, no, you are amazing. You're amazing. And he's like, I'm not going to lie. I needed that. I really enjoyed that because I feel like it was addressing, like... Hey, I him, love you, Andrew. How he I love you. feels because not a lot of people love his movies too much. And he was supposed to get that third film. And I thought you were great Peter and Spider-Man. I wouldn't MCU. change but nothing this was about redemption you. for Andrew Garfield. I feel not that he himself needed it because again, I don't think he did a bad job as Spider-Man. But this was perfect for me. This was absolutely perfect for me. And Toby, Toby's my favorite, and I think he came in and he played ex the part that he was supposed to play perfectly. You know, he's the older Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. We got the callbacks so like my back. My bag, and he's still there, like, all right, about to start. Like, oh, yeah. And the two yeah. of them are like, oh, yeah, I got my bag. I forgot about, about, about that part. And, um, I watched I, the I first one last movie. night. It, when he when he steps in front. And that scientist line from the goblin. Of I was Tom like, yeah, Holland's yeah. Peter Parker to stop him from killing the goblin. Right. 
that's him being an older Spider-Man mm. who knows what Spider-Man and Peter Parker are all about. Mm -hmm. They are not about killing. They are about curing, as Tobey Maguire says. Mm -hmm. And we get that point get when the science bros are all, you know, trying to get the cures for everything. And he goes, I think I can cure Osborne. And if you notice, you look at Tom Holland's Spider-Man, right? he kind of looks down, he kind of looks at him, because Osborne just killed Aunt May. But then Toby looks at him and he goes, we got to cure all of them, right? That's what we do. And that's the role that mm. Toby Maguire's Peter Parker plays. The older, the bad more guys, more experienced what we do. Peter Parker. The one that has a wife now, right? That has MJ, we can assume, because he's a lot older. You know, he says they made it work, which was really, really Just cool. Just saw that part again last night. About, that looked you know, a little softcore porn there girls, in the rain. You know, what happened with theirs? Got right? hard nipples poking but through in the wet rain. And then he gets stabbed. And that moment, oh my gosh, at that moment, I was about to be really, really mad. Because yeah. I, in my mind, going yeah. into the movie, I was like, there's zero reasons for you to kill Tobey Maguire's exactly. Spider-Man. There's zero reasons for you to pull... And he's got spider sense. It was very, very Should have known that was coming. Love. Bring him into ours and kill him for no reason. But he got stabbed, but he lived. So that was like, that was phenomenal, right? Another aspect of the movie that I liked was the Doctor Strange aspect. Because it kind of yeah, like, it you, cool you made it, because it kind of connected it, right, to the MCU. But it didn't deter too much. We no. had some really, really cool fight scenes. No. Um, we saw how smart Peter Parker was during those scenes. Mm -hmm. And what that did was set up Peter Parker to kind of be on his own with his two best friends, MJ and Ned. And I feel like this movie really did give Tom Holland's Peter Parker time to shine, like I mentioned before. But the best part about this movie, I think, is that it showed us, and it really did capture who Peter Parker is, who Spider-Man is on the inside. And with the help of Aunt May, he realizes that he's supposed to help people. That's what Spider-Man does, the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I thought May was and crazy. Really I remember I said it in the film, theater. I was like, you're crazy. Goes through, no. We'll call his torture of having lost Aunt May and wanting his revenge on Green Goblin. At the end of the movie, you have the two people that he loves the most. He lost Aunt May. They're all he has. He makes the promise that he's going to show up again and tell them, I love you, hey, this is what happened, and then, like, click, maybe everything's going to come back. And he goes and he meets MJ, and he sees that they both got into MIT. He sees that their lives are better. Hmm. Then he questions telling them. Right. But then it looks like he still decides that he's going to, right? Because maybe me telling them wouldn't change something is probably what he's I knew he wasn't going to say that but then she moves her hair back <laughs> and he sees the bandage on her head and he realizes that came from me right she's in danger because of me and as long as I'm Spider-Man she's always going to be in danger and that's like the big Spider-Man thing right as long mm -hmm. as I'm Spider-Man you're always in danger right. so what does he decide to do he himself makes the sacrifice for the better good of the people he loves and that, to me, is what Spider-Man is all about. And again, that's a Tom Holland Spider-Man right there, right? Yeah, the other two came in, and it was phenomenal. And I loved every second of it. But this is what Spider-Man is about. Even, you know, when he goes to Doctor Strange, he says, do it. Make everyone forget me, because that'll save the universe. It's for the greater good. Spider-Man puts other people in front of him. That's who Spider-Man is. And that was captured in this movie, I feel, with Tom Holland Spider-Man. Same thing with the other Spider-Man. Same thing, same thing with Toby stepping up and keeping him from killing Green Goblin. That was twofold, right? That was to keep Tom Spider-Man from going down a dark path, which clearly the other two have. And it was to save Osborne, who was sick, right? He knew he was sick. It's not him. It was the Goblin. Now, of course, I have to mention the hand-to-hand -hand combat because speaking of Tom and the Goblin, wow, what a final scene that was when they were fighting. Yeah. And we got to see yeah. Tom just in full rage mode, Beating using the shit his webs to fight, using his physical power to fight, and the way he like slinged him on the floor, amazing. Then, yeah. not to mention, when they're fighting in the apartment building, I mean, Goblin's like throwing him through walls, slamming him through like multiple levels. Rock bottoms, power building, bombs. Down, absolutely beating the crap out of him. Yeah. No, if Aunt May wasn't there, Goblin would have killed him. But fortunately and unfortunately, May was there and that ended up killing her. And we had the, you know, the Uncle Ben moment, which was necessary for Spider-Man, right? Was necessary. But the, the action was insane. Even when he's fighting Doc Ock, 
with the tentacles, that was fantastic. I loved how that happened. He's oh yeah, that was cars. good. He's picking up, you know, those huge concrete like cylinder mm -hmm. things, and he's throwing at them, and he's actually getting hit, and he's actually kind of getting beat up, and it's it's actually really really cool. I thought the action was phenomenal. Then you get the three Spider Men, and they're kind of a mess at first, right? Because mm -hmm. they're used to working alone, and then we get that cool thing with Tom Holland. Tom Holland Spider Man's like, I was an Avenger, and Toby's like, You were an Avenger? That's great. What's an Avenger? Like it cracked me up. Even in the midst of like all of the serious stuff, they still managed yeah. to keep that humor, which I personally love. I know some people are like, oh, the humor is still too I much. Saw I that kind of like it. Down I feel like Spider-Man is that type of character. So I just feel like they did a lot of justice to the character. But then, of course, they come together, and it's Tom that brings them together, which is what I really like because it's still about mm -hmm. him, right? Tom, who is the youngest Spider-Man, and I would argue, you know, has, hasn't matured the most as the others right. just because he's younger. Says, you know, we're gonna work as a team. We're gonna trust each other. We're gonna trust our tingle. Let's go do this. And then the next sequence is just the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Three Spider-Man <laughs> swinging together, landing yes. down together. Yes. Which, by the way, we all knew that that was cut out of the out of the trailers, right? I mean, that was pretty obvious. And then, yeah. you know, then we do have the Spider-Man kicking the lizard in the face, obviously, right? I mean, that was pretty yep. great, but. That next sequence of the Spider-Man working together of one of the, I think it was Tom Spider-Man that swings up, shoots the other two Spider-Man, webs them up, they all swing together. I mean, they just, and you know, they, they did everything I wanted them to do with the Spider-Man. It's like, they did the pointing meme, right? And they did it in a way that was different, right? They're like, hey, Peter. It's like, yeah? Oh, you? Trying to talk to you? Trying to talk to me? To, that was perfect. I love that take on it. They talked about the organic web shooters versus mm -hmm. the you know mechanized yeah. web shooters that was so perfect and they actually made like kind of like a running on joke about it right they're like whoa well, how does that even and andrew's like so confused and and then they get on you know statue of liberty and they're like so like is it just your wrist or is it come on anywhere else like they did exactly yeah. what that i feel like if this was all real would happen right you guys it's are like, gonna no, ask that question we just have to make ours and you just produce yours and they talk about you know did you ever have a web block and he's like, oh, yeah, I did. You know, we've yeah, all yeah, seen yeah, that yeah, movie yeah, yeah. where he can't. Yeah. And he's like, why? And he's like, existential crisis. And it's just yeah. like, they did everything perfectly, I feel. Like, they really did do everything perfectly for this movie. They brought in the three Spider-Mans, and they did fan service to us, but it all made sense. And that is truly why I love this movie. Because you definitely they love gave us something we've always wanted. You definitely love Spider-Man. And it so. made sense. <laughs> they executed it perfectly. And then you take the cast, this grade A cast, and they had everyone perform to the best level that they could, which I truly believe. I think everybody gave it their all. And I think the acting was phenomenal. And then they threw in some really great action sequences and then they took you on an emotional roller coaster pulling at your heartstrings may dying toby getting stabbed peter parker crying andrew garfield crying about gwen and then he, saving mj he, and crying he loved it more and way more than i did everything perfectly and that's what i think i think it's the perfect listening listen to the joy it's the perfect super the energy in his it's voice my favorite movie of all time i it, it is. And call me biased for liking Spider-Man so much. That's fine. I totally get it. And yes. Like I said, some people yes. are going to say it's a great movie, not my favorite. That's fine. That's fine. But this is my review. And I just told you why I, why I think yeah, so. Because I, I think you. it, it, You're it really captured. That. I understand why people would his time to feel that way. It was an mm -hmm. emotional journey, for sure. And the villains were fantastic. Like, honestly, the movie would have been fantastic if it was just Tom versus all the other villains. Because... That was executed perfectly. And then you just, you, but you had the other three. Everything we've talked about. Hmm. They didn't have that one. Years. They we spoke had, about Miles, though. I mean, like, everything. Daredevil showed up in the beginning. Like, uh -huh. um, it's insane. So, this is now my new favorite movie. And this is my review on Spider-Man No Way Home. I hope you all <laughs> loved it. I hope everybody watching this has already watched the film. Because you want to go into this, uh, as you all know, not... You know, having the least amount of spoilers as you can. It's like, yeah, I've been talking about Toby and Andrew showing up for years, right? Mm -hmm. For for over a year. But there was always like that point zero 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 one percent in the back of my head going like, well, you know, it never was confirmed by Sony yet, so we'll see. Ninety nine point nine 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 percent of me knew, right? I yeah. talked to people, I know insiders, blah blah yeah. blah blah. But there was that point zero 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 one percent that was like, eh. We'll see. And yeah. that actually made me love the movie more. Going in, 
not knowing when they were going to show up and going like, show up, show up, show up, and they showed up, and it was just, it was fantastic. So, I hope you love the movie. Now my new favorite movie. Thank you for joining me on this journey. If you didn't catch my thank you video, I did it yesterday. Thank you to all of you for supporting me over the time. And now, we have some crazy stuff coming up. Obviously, we're going to be talking about Spider-Man more. But Multiverse of Madness is coming up. King's yeah. coming. And Ant-Man. There's just so much. The yeah. love Thunder Guardians. Yeah. We're not done. This is only part of the journey. Yeah, and it's only going to get coming. better for here. But in the meantime, let me know what you thought about the movie. Rate it in the comments down below. I am curious to hear everyone's opinion on this. I love you all 3,000, and I will catch you all next time. Woof, woof. Thank you very much, Wonder. Thank you very much. Your bias blinds you, Master Wonder. <laughs> he loved it. He is just he has just seen the most beautiful woman that he has ever seen in person in his life, and he is in love with her. <laughs> He's like, it's just perfect. He's entitled to that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He is a super Spider-Man fan. He's a super fan. I'm a fan of Spider-Man. He's a super fan. I can tell. He's a super fan. Like, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, as far as everything else from here on, I feel like it's downhill from here. I really feel like that they are not going to do as good of a job with Love and Thunder, with um, Ant-Man, with um, Multiverse of Madness. Like, I'm worried. I'm worried. Not so much about Multiverse of Madness, more so Love and Thunder and Ant-Man. I'm not sh you know what I mean? Especially Love and Thunder. But we shall see. I'm hoping that they prove me wrong because every movie that I go to see, I want to like. That is my hard-earned money that I'm spending to watch this. And I want to add another film to my collection so that when I need a pick-me-up or just want to smile or get excited or enjoy myself, I can pop that DVD in, that Blu-ray in, stream it, and feel good. You know what I'm saying? So... Post comments down below. Let me know what you all thought. If you enjoyed my reaction to this. Is he right? Is he wrong? Let me know what you guys think too. And uh, yeah. 10 million subscribers. Woo.